I believe, though, the most popular musicians that are out there are instruments of Satan directly. I don't think that it's just benign. I don't think that they're just doing their things. I think they're devils. I think a lot of these people have sold their souls to the devil, like quite literally or at least figuratively in a way where, where they care about the fame, they care about the fortune, they care about, you know, as, he was, as Satan was offering to Jesus Christ, they took that deal. Okay, I'll worship you or give me all this stuff. I'll do it. I'll be your puppet. I'll be your pawn. And this is evidence. This is, look, this is, you call me crazy. I don't care. I know that we live in a realm that is not only physical, but they're spiritual. I know that there's a spiritual battle going on. I know that the Bible talks about devils and it talks about angels and it talks about battles going on in the present tense. I know that this stuff is happening. Okay, so you could call me crazy all you want, but I know also that Satan's going to try to be using people in this battle, just like Jesus was, was, was um, railing against the, the children of the devil. He called them the Pharisees, you child of the devil. There are children of the devil today. Hey, I'm a child of God, amen. I'm born again because I put my faith in Jesus Christ. Now I'm a child of God. But there are people out there that have made that deal with the devil that are children of the devil. They have made that decision and that's where they've gone. And they are on the enemy's side. And these people, whether they realize what they were getting into or not, it doesn't matter. They've gotten into things to where they don't even fully understand, I think, in many cases, what they've done. There's this thing called automatic writing. And many of the popular musicians, look, I know a lot about these musicians because, for one, I read biographies, I read autobiographies, I, read, I, not, I love the music so much that I would read about them. Like, not just listen to the music, but I mean, I, I, you know, I tried to get all their stuff, anything I could find about it. I was really into this stuff. And the things that I heard, and then even after that, I, I saw this other documentary that kind of put some of this stuff together. I think it's called They Sold Their Soul for Rock and Roll or something. And it, it, it's okay with the information it presents. They have kind of a false gospel, but, um, but some of the information they, they present is, is accurate and true. And there's this thing called automatic writing, and what, and what it is is that these musicians would describe how they were able to come up with music where they would literally just, they'd have the pen in their hand and it was just, the words were just coming out and they weren't even like thinking about it at all. It was just, it was just kind of appearing on the paper before them as they're just writing out. And they, were, they would talk about how amazing this was and it would be some of their best hits. Like they would just, they would have these words coming out and, and you know, I've heard it from their mouths. Where they would say, like, this happened to me. Like, I experienced this. In, in recordings, in interviews, they, they, don't, they don't deny it. They just say, yeah, this, you know, I, don't, I can't explain it. I don't know where it comes from. And, you know, a lot of them would be, you know, and, and, you know these, these rock stars would be heavy into drugs, heavy into drinking. And usually that's when they got their, their best songs is when they're all, you know, doped up and, and drugged out and stuff. And they would, they would get in this state where I believe that they would become demon-possessed. I believe that they were writing it not even of their own words, but of, of being possessed by the devil or one of his demons. This has happened. This is, this is a fact. You can look it up for yourself. For many, many, many of the famous artists have admitted to that. There was a Black Sabbath, right? There's Ozzy Osbourne and his wicked band. They claim that there was, you know, that they, they all would admit to this, that when they would play, it was like there was a fifth member, there was four members of the band, it was like the fifth member of their band that would just like bring them all together, that there was like an, an entity or, or something that they could feel present in their music. Music is powerful. A lot of people think, oh, it's just some gimmick. Oh, you just do this because they just want to make some extra money. They might want to make some extra money, but it's more, way more than just a gimmick. Bob Dylan is one who's been on record of basically saying that he sold his soul to the devil. Jim Morrison spake of communicating with spirits. He was always, you know, Mr. Mojo Rising was always talking about the, you know, this Indian spirit and stuff when he was a kid that, that went into his body. And you wonder where his music came from. You wonder why he died at 27 of a, of a drug overdose. Jimi Hendrix talked about, you know, his voodoo and his, and his voodoo music. You look at the Beatles or Led Zeppelin who, who uh, 
were, were buddy buddy with Aleister Crowley, the, the, the famous Satanist that, that was into witchcraft and all kinds of, of, of discussion. I think he was a sodomite as well, just into all kinds of wickedness. And they consulted him. And I think, you know, the Beatles even had a picture of him on their, on their Sgt. Pepper's uh, uh, album. And, I mean, you, when you start realizing more, you, you think, oh, the Beatles, I, I want to hold your hand. You know, it's just so harmless. It's just so, you know, no. Those guys were wicked. I mean, think about John Lennon was one of the Beatles who said, you know, imagine no heaven. Imagine no God. I mean, you know, his song, imagine, is wicked as hell. And these are the people that you want to listen to, right? The Rolling Stones or the, you know, the open sodomites of, of the music industry, the Fre Freddie Mercury or the David Bowie. And you know what? David Bowie, not only did he have his own music, he wrote way more music than you would ever realize. He wrote songs for other people to play and for other people to perform and other people to sing. And that guy is an open, disgusting, perverted sodomite that hates God. And he's the one writing all these songs for other people. Say, oh, but they're not a sodomite. Yeah, but they're singing a sodomite song. Elton John's another one. Not only does Elton John perform, he also writes songs for other people that other people perform. They get their influence in it. Why? Because they have a message. They have a message from the devil and they want to get it into a Christian's head. They want to get it into the world's head. They want to get that, that perverted message into everybody's head.